Hello everyone. Uh, we are going to cover UGC NET paper 1 in uh, the coming subsequent videos. So paper 1 is general paper on teaching and research aptitude in which they are trying to assess a candidate's comprehension, analysis, evaluation, understanding of argument and the understanding of deductive and inductive reasoning. In this particular video, we will only cover a high level uh, view on teaching. Uh, what I have seen, uh, they generally ask around three to five questions just on this topic, which we are going to cover. Uh, and the other topics that uh, we had talked about, like comprehension, analysis, reasoning, etc., that we will cover in subsequent videos. So let's get started. Teaching aptitude. Well, teaching facilitates students learning. And in this context, we are talking in a, of a formal setup like, you know, school, colleges, our typical educational institutes. And two high level objective of this are Either you are trying to teach a new skill to the student or you are trying to enhance the knowledge. Well, skill is like commonsensically you can say that uh, a student should be able to do something new with the knowledge and a knowledge is of course understanding of the subject that is being covered. So uh, when we talk about teaching there are certain characteristics that a learner needs to have to to maximize the effectiveness one is you know student needs to be attentive he needs to retain the uh, knowledge that is being inculcated uh, the student should participate by asking questions uh, and they should also share their knowledge so what are the key factors which impact teaching of course qualification of teacher somebody who's trying to teach you something should have sufficient knowledge on the subject and uh, teaching skills which, which again you know sometimes a person is extremely good in his own understanding but is not able to communicate to the students so that should not be the case teacher should be able to communicate express himself and make students understand then the classroom environment now, uh, this classroom can be anything like this video, you know, is again a mode of teaching and and last but not the least students background and ability. Again, if, if I start teaching a PhD level course to a first standard student, obviously, no matter how hard I try, the person, uh, student will not be able to understand. So before you start, you need to have an appropriate background and understanding of students ability. You know, you cannot j jump to class 10th uh, for, for a student of class one. So similarly, before uh, you start, always, you know, have a understanding of your students ability. Then key methods of teaching. Again, you know, they, they are not uh, uh, these are not the only methods but these are some of the extensively used terms in methods of teaching one is of course explaining in, in a typical classroom setup we have lectures uh, students can ask certain question but it's it is generally a one way where teacher is explaining a certain topic to the students then next which is more uh, which has more impact on the students is demonstration uh, retention level in this is quite high because when you uh, can see or you know actually do certain uh, something the retention is quite high and next is collaboration in this you know uh, this is more participative a student uh, the talking is equal by teacher and the student and teacher basically encourages 
student to ask question and even try to answer within group and you know discuss and come up with solution then heuristic method is learner center uh, centered method in this uh, uh, the focus is not the teacher but the student then is discovery method again it is uh, learning by doing so in, in demonstration what happens teacher leads the class whereas in discovery we, we give a very high level uh, guideline to the student and encourage them to learn experiment with thing and come up with their own answers then of course project method as we talk about higher classes now you have learned something how do you apply it to a real time problem to uh, or you know maybe come up with some tangible proof that you have learned something like in an it setup you can ask a student to develop let's say library management system of course it not it will not be a full fledged uh, product but a, a small project will be able to demonstrate the level of understanding of the student so project method again is is very powerful but it, it is generally used uh, towards the end for more of evaluation of understanding then uh, we talk about teaching aids teaching facilitate you know a better understanding of the subject aid which helps in you know grasping the subject better so nowadays uh, it being the technology era we have tons of uh, teaching aids available it can be electronic which is, which are the recent or you know not very old like your projectors the, we have television audio video tapes computer tablet smartphone all these can be used uh, in teaching like you are list, uh, you know watching this video on youtube this is again a teaching aid and non electronic are more traditional uh, teaching aid which have been used for uh, decades now like your blackboard which you will find in most of the classrooms then you have models activities games puzzles chart so any any tool that a teacher can use to uh, facilitate or you know better understanding of the subject to student is a teaching aid very commonly you know questions have come in the previous papers on these education commission reports so first education commission report was prepared by dr radha krishnan which was called university education commission it was done in 1948 then second report was dalier commission in 1956 kothari commission which was which came out or and was final report was released in 1966 and the, the key objective of these reports comprehensively evaluate the education system and to come up with a standardized format which can be used um, nationwide rather than different universities teaching different things without any interconnection so so these guys came up with you know what should be the duration of degree how uh, like you know you have class 10th then plus 2 then 3 years of diploma uh, degree then 2 years of post graduation which is a typical structure so these uh, reports analyzed uh, the structure at that point uh, on their respective years and came up with some recommendations you can uh, again you know search on it and read in more details you can expect some questions on these reports in the paper so now we'll talk about some of the previous uh, papers some of the questions which are there like uh, i i'm taking the recent july 2014 you can go through the question and try to answer uh, these then we will discuss the solution if if you if a teacher is able to generate enough curiosity in student you know the answer will be student asking question uh, and again like registration and again this is a july 2014 question effective december 2013 questions punish the answers here we are you know some common understanding can eliminate some of the 
choices but yes you need to have a formal understanding of the subject to to uh, get to the 100% accurate answer of the questions so when when we talk about arranging my approach generally is very logical so so all these steps are given first will be have to formulate the objectives so which option starts with uh, option 4 is uh, d and of course then make sure that you go uh, go through the whole thing and make sure it it is you know forming a flow and answer is d so with this we'll conclude the uh, the first video of this uh, series thanks for your time and hope you like this video